welcome to another Guild Ball Informer video. Uh, you are joined today by your host Chris. And your host Jay. And today we are bringing you episode 2 of the Q&A with no name. Isn't that right? That is, yes. Uh, we had some good suggestions last week uh, and I'm sure we've got another few today. Yes we did, thank you for all your questions. And as a bit of a public service announcement, I would like to say that the clicky pen has been retired from Guild Ball Informer. Aww. I know some of you are deeply mourning this. And thank you for the barrage of abuse I got over that pen via Facebook and YouTube. You might actually be able to watch this video now. Chris is instructed that if I ever bring a clicky pen to a video again, he may stab me in the eye with his finger. So, without further ado guys, um, we're going to keep it exactly the same as last week. We're going to jump in and we're hoping we get some good name suggestions and by the end of this episode we can have some potentials if not a winner. Yes. So, exciting. without further ado, I will start us off. Starting with... Which is the start. Yeah, that's the start? end, but the start, yeah. There we go. Cool. So, we're going to start with Quinn, the James Slayer Duggan, who's actually about Over 20 up. feet of us playing with his engineers. So, Quinn, oi, you two missed out my suggestion, which is pitch side coaching. Pitch side coaching? Like it, not like it? Uh, try harder, Quinn. Vague. Just try harder. No, it's good, Quinn. I'm joking. Anyway, this is weird because you can like, potentially hear us. Yeah, I know, it's where abuse that is. Anyway. Anyway, time for a question. I'm thinking of starting a Brewers team in honour of my Scottish heritage. <laughs> I was thinking of teams, so here's my beat up Brewers called I'm Not Drunk, You're Drunk. Good name for a team. Um, <laughs> Tapper Scum, Hooper Spigot, Stave Stoker. What do you think, guys? So basically, it is core Brewers without Friday. Didn't he ask this last week? I can't imagine that. Um, maybe we missed all of his questions. Yeah, maybe. Um, very good. Um, Sto if I was playing pure brewers, Stoker would be the one I would leave. What about you? Uh, I think the same. I think uh, it sounds like a great idea. Um, Competitive-wise, though, I think you need a bit more balance with Friday in the team, yep. uh, just for a bit more scoring potential. Um, but yeah, if you want to go for all-out beating, uh, then you've got the right sort of lineup. Yeah, it sounds good fun. And it, if the team is called, I'm not drunk, you're drunk. You just want to be running around smashing people. So. Providing you don't want to take Union, that is a very good, solid one of two Brewers teams, I suppose. Uh, yeah, I'd quite like to hear other people's team names as well, because it's something that uh, I don't think we've really heard. Yeah, so, so... So people got little... So let, this is going to be the first of, of a new weekly segment in this Q&A show. This is the weekly Guild Ball Informer Challenge. So we are asking you all to tell us your teams and your team name and why for next week's Q&A. That sounds good, doesn't it? That sounds great, so, yeah. So answers in the comments for next week. Ready the next one? Uh, yes, this is from GBL, GBHL Podcast. He's, which, al he's also playing a game about is this two tables from Not us, James. yeah. And he's <laughs> doing a sexy boy dance. Um, so we've got another one from one of our local So players. he's wanting to con congratulate me on the success of the channel so uh, far. I think he's um, congratulating us both. Uh, and he likes the idea of tooled up our, or trash talk. So yeah, ones that were suggested last week. Tooled up's definitely I up I really like tooled, tooled up. up. As, as a, a rage lover, mm. tooled up is great. Um, or something like Under the Influence or another reference to something uniquely Guild Ball. Under the Influence. Do you like that? I really like that. Under the Influence with Jay and Chris. Or Chris and Jay. We've had this. We'll, we'll, We're going to we'll get, get to that. <laughs> on that one. Anyway, moving on. So his question. Uh, as a new a newish player, um, choosing when to use momentum and what for seems to be a real difference between, um, between good players and experienced players. Uh, any specific advice on when to heal, remove conditions, and what the priority should be for using momentum? Uh, should he stand up, remove conditions, or heal, or or what? Um, for me, I think it depends on yeah, what address, team you are. Um, yeah, let's address this bit and then we'll move on. So it. Um, see, th th this question is one that you end up talking about a lot, and I say a lot that the uses of momentum is what takes a good player into a great player. It is. Um, and I think regarding using momentum for the sakes of heal and removing conditions, um, specifically mentioning the knockdown and stuff, the key to it all, as in most things against Gilbert, is knowing what's coming. So yeah. it's not. So if it say, let's say, for example, you've got Ox and he's on six health and he's on the ground. You, and you're looking across at, let's say, Gutter and Decimate, just as random examples. A good, what really makes you a good player and what really controls how you use your momentum sort of accurately is knowing roughly how much damage they're going to do and what they can trigger off their playbook depending on what you've got left. Yep. And the toss up is do you recover for health or do for health, health, or do you remove the conditions to make it harder for them to hit you? 
but it all for me boils back down to the fact that you need to know roughly what your enemy's going to do. Yeah, because things like if you have one, um, if you have one momentum, uh, and it's your activation, and you can see, like you suggested, two other models about to come at you, um, deciding whether you a save that momentum for a counter attack, for example. It's knowing, uh, for example, if now Decimate were to attack you with a one-inch melee, if you had a easy access to pushes or dodges um, and had enough health to sustain one hit. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Or do you heal for wounds? Yeah, and without making it too specific to certain models and stuff, I, I, I do think the right answer for that is literally it's about knowing your enemy to a degree. You need, you need, And the thing is, sometimes if you can go... Oh, I can stop that with momentum, but then that'll happen. Sometimes just let it happen. Yeah. Keep the momentum. I think it's very situational. Yeah. And, and, and th like uses of momentum, you you may be looking at a model about to die and think, right, save that model. But you know what? It could be the end of the turn, and you could have a model that, if you went first, can go and score. Yeah. And sometimes it's like, okay, I will sacrifice that two VPs to take four, four on the, the side two. of the pitch your yep. opponent isn't concentrating on at the yep. moment. So it's very much about assessing where you are in the turn, how important going next in the turn is, and knowing what your enemy can do. Um, and more generally, I guess, it does depend on what team you're playing. Obviously, the fishermen uh, very rarely win initiative, so as soon as you understand <coughs> that, you may as well spend all your momentum keeping your models alive. Yep. If you're butchers and you're playing against fishermen, there's no point healing your own models, really, because they're not going to take that much damage, exactly. so you might as well use momentum for other like things. Like we say, know your enemy. So, just, yeah. just know your enemy. And then the second part of his question? Um, it seems to me that another thing experienced players have a handle on is how to shut down and get around the obvious power plays, traits and strengths of key players, like dodging into engage models, uh, for example, rage or bore, and preventing them from doing what they do best. Uh, discuss any anti-play plays that we can think of. Yeah. Nice. Many thanks, GBHL James. Um, so I would start with that by, I'll, t I'll tell you something I do in a game. When when I'm playing a game, maybe not casual games, but if I'm playing a competitive game, I sort of have a, and I don't do it as much now because I know most of the players. But I have a set of questions that I ask, and it's basically IDing the dangerous plays that, that from my opposing team. So it's who has the two-inch melees, who has unpredictable movement, who has close control, who has gluttonous mass now. Because I have spoke to James today, and this bit, um, the reason he asked the question was because of gluttonous mass, but he, he wants to answer it on, on a broader scale. Yeah. And the thing is, again, without repeating myself and saying it's about knowing your enemy, so let's start with unpredictable movement. So you charge in and your opponent gets a two-inch dodge, so unpredictable movement, the easy counter for that is... A two-inch melee model. Who charges? Who charges base to base? Exactly. So you very much plan that at time of deployment for the game. If they've got unpredictable movement on this side of the pitch, don't put your two-inch melee models on this side of the pitch. It's very much just a bit of forward planning on behalf. So that is the easy counter to unpredictable movement. Um, what else have we got? So it's also it, it's knowledge as well. So the likes of close control, um, which is ignore the first tackle. Um, stir, uh, no, yep. So with that, you just need to plan your. <laughs> yeah, you know what I did. There. You need to plan your influence yep. accordingly. You can't go. Oh, it's going to cost me one to get the ball, and then go. Oh, it, it's, again, it's very much knowledge is power. Uh, and like front. things like close control, don't tackle them. Get the ball another way by knocking them down, Knock and making them down the ball scatter. The yeah, yeah uh, absolutely. and things like that. So it's just again, yeah, knowing your enemy, knowing yeah. what the key things are in their team. Yeah, and then the the obvious things. So. For shutting down the likes of Boar, there are, for me, two ways of doing it, actually. Your, your, your first one is the engage him. Engage him with a high defence model who can stay there for a while. Yep. Um, and, and this goes for anyone with Furious, I suppose. And the second one is blind. Uh, yeah. So you can, you can make him minus four, minus four move. So he's going to be like, what is he going to be? He's going to be a zero two movement. And the thing is, if he gets anyone, he's going to be tack four. And with him being two plus defense, he's very easy to hit with a blind. Yep. So someone like Hemlock can really can go to, his day, can yeah. really get hold of the big guys and go. You lot are basically sprinting two inches a turn, and then you can just play out of their melee ranges. And I guess the third one is uh, knowing their their charge range on their melee zone, so if he's got an 8-inch yeah, exactly. range, just keep everything 8 inches away, mm. uh, In case especially the at the start. Yeah. Yeah. But engaging them is probably the most effective. Yeah. Um, so, what what other common ones can you think, like power plays, if you will? 
Some of them, unfortunately, you can't stop. I some, think Gutter's, some... Gutter's Chain Grab is the one that I think most people uh, identify as, as pretty hard to stop. Um, so the way I've counted it before is uh, have a player like Hemlock um, go and do whatever it is, like collect the ball, someone with a high defence to make it harder for them to chain grab them, and then stand other models behind them so that if they try and get a pull... Uh, or drag, then they hit models, so put stuff in rough ground, yeah. um, so that they, they you know, get Absolutely, out of the way. Yeah. And then to touch on gluttonous mask, I know that's one we've got. The key is so, so the really obvious stuff without turning out to suck is don't charge a model with gluttonous mask. Move over and hit it. Yeah. If, you, if, you, if it's going to ignore the first thing, do the cheapest thing you can make it ignore. Um, yeah, or pick a model that isn't going to do anything else and do a ranged character play just to, to get rid of it because they yeah. can't choose when to use That's it. That's it, remove it, it by other means first. and and don't waste a one influence model running over there because you're getting nothing for that influence. Like Again, it's all about knowing what's knowing your enemy and planning a card in it. If there's any more specific um, rules you want to know effectively, counters and ways to handle, put them in the comments below and we'll answer them next week. Yeah. So cheers for the question, James. You asked that. And next we've got Shenbans. And he puts, I love the look of Ballisto, what's your opinion? My opinion is engineers are for winners, and I've said it since day one. You love engineers. Engineers so. are for winners, and avarice and greed is for winners. <laughs> you heard uh, it here. I'm not a huge fan of engineers um, in terms of how they look, so I'm not a huge fan of Ballista. He just looks like a sort of a tubby guy holding a crossbow with a funny tail. Yeah, um, so. yeah l let's assume he means the aesthetic look of yes. Ballista. Um, I like it. I think it's. I think it's very tongue in cheek. I'm not a massive fan of steam funk. Steampunk. Not funk. Steam funk. Steam funk. That? <laughs> That's how I grew. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of steampunk, but luckily it's not that bad in that respect. But um, yeah, I I don't not like it. It's not one of my favourite models in the range, granted, but I don't not like it. Yeah, I, again, I, yeah, same. I don't dislike it. I think it's okay, but uh, it doesn't scream at me. But okay, so thanks again, thanks Shen. Shen's a good lad. Thank you for the question, buddy. We up to it from you next week. And another question from GBH. This podcast. is from the other is this half. From of the Jamie Gibb. This is Jamie Gibbon. Um, we had this question last week, but we're going to uh, answer this extensively. Right obviously, now. yeah, he didn't get the uh, <coughs> required level of. of Answer, so who is the best defensive midfielder? Pre Arata Hammock. Just pandering to Jamie, that's what he said. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I said Obulus last week, but he said non captain. He says non captain. So uh, we're going to actually answer this. Let's do it. So what options did we have? We had Mallet, Worcester Mallet, and Jack. And Jack, and Hemlock. And Hemlock. Anyone else? Um, ballista, but the captain, so yep. not Ballista. Uh, not Obulus. Uh, and they're the only proper defensive midfielders mm -hmm. um, that I can think of so Priorata it was definitely Hemlock uh, would you say it's still Hemlock post I, I, th I think Flint is amazing uh, Mallet is amazing yes so I think even Mallet would give Hemlock a run for money um, even so, Priorata so for me it's Mallet ok so post Arata right now I would agree with Chris A and we are saying the best defensive midfielder in Guild Ball is Mallet and we could draw a line under the question now yes if you don't agree, which I'm sure you're going to let us know, please stick it in the comments for next week. Thank you. Next up is Oliver Current, and he says, winning every bloody tournament going, that's what I meant. Is he talking about you? Yeah, I think, was. I think this was just uh, the question last week that he said about whether me and Steve Newton were going to get nerfed. Oh, right. And I think he was just referring to the fact oh, that yeah. we win um, So. He but cheats. We did, we he did. cheats massively, but he's a friend, so we, we let him do it. You know what I mean? He's, Cheating for winners. He doesn't cheat, disclaimer. <laughs> He's just a very good player. So thanks for the question, Oliver. And next up is Fat Piranha. See, I think I found out who this is. This is... Uh, I'm going to trip myself up now. James Cannon, I think. Jonathan oh, Cannon. Jonathan, is Jonathan it? Cannon. Off. Is it? Yeah. I think it is. If I'm wrong, put it in the comment and let me know. But I think I've followed the trail through to Twitter and he's he's Fat Piranha on Twitter. Do you stalk people? No. <laughs> it, was just a, it was a lucky coincidence. So, um, um, so Disclaimer, no, I, if you see Chris Hay in your bushes at night, please phone the police. <laughs> that programme you were watching last night was pretty good, but <laughs> no, I don't know where you live. Um, or the ball spot. Um, the ball spot's good. On I'm the ball. Up. On the ball no, 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 or no, no, the no. ball spot. In time, because I'm going to talk about this. OK. So, and you also, so the ball spot is your first suggestion, and your second one is on the ball with Chris and Jay. Now, first comment. Loving it, Chris okay. and Jay. So, it, first of all, it would be Jay and Chris. 
Okay. Secondly, on the ball is my favourite suggestion so far. Really? Because on the ball means you're sort of, it's a bit of a play on words to mean you're wise, which we're not, but, <laughs> but we're supposed to be in this show. What and, arrogant. The, and the ball brings a football reference, and it's going to be Jane Chris. So forget about, <laughs> I, I, whichever way we go, I, I'm not keen on the like Jane Chris thing. Very on the ball like. for me, along with the one that James suggested, which was. Tooled up. No, no, no. So under the influence, on the ball at the top for me. Um, well, momentum like we had last week momentous, momentous inspiration. inspiration I still think on the ball is my winner at the moment so you are looking in good stead um, Jonathan Cannon or random person who Chris stalked um, so thank you for both the name suggestions buddy please keep them coming and we're loving you being involved uh, this overflows from two just oh. start on one that's four Oh, okay, yep, yeah, there we go. So this is Oliver Cunt. So no, this was Nobby from last week. Nobby? Yeah. <laughs> He's Nobby on the forums. And okay. on battle cool. and things. Um, Chris and Jay say is his suggestion. Again, loving the Chris and Jays. Everybody's uh, uh, feeling the uh, the change of power. So you lasted one week as a channel host before you got booted off. How do you feel? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with you all, man? Uh, I'm guessing Jay doesn't like that suggestion, so we'll move on to your question. <laughs> um, out of season two players so far, who do we feel brings the most to their respective teams? He's obviously biased towards Chisel as a Masons player, but he does think that Compound is rather good and quite effective when he's played against him. So okay, so worth noting, yeah, the um, at point of filming, Chisel and Compound are released tomorrow. But we're not dropping any massive spoilers. The cards were released on Vassal. They because were. We looked out to the Vassal mod. Yeah. So we all got a sneak We've seen peek. Them. Yep. I think quite a lot of people have played them on the Vassal now. For me, it is compound without a shadow of a doubt. He brings two influence. Tender Eye. If I'm going to compare him to Tender Eye, they have very similar profiles and playbooks and, and stat lines, etc. But he has Gluttonous Mass. Yep. He brings two influence, not one. Yep. He has Rush Keeper, which he has. And he's three plus for the guy. Yeah, three's one. Yeah. As is Tender yep. Um but the, the different goalkeeping they have is Tenderizer makes it fives on the target number. Um, compound makes it two influence. To kick. Yep. Yes. And that I is, would take that, that. And that is to kick. Yes. It's not to shoot. So it's just to kick. You can place him anywhere on the pitch. Yes. And but the, the flip side is whereas Tenderizer's is a trait, oh, Compound has to up. spend one. But the returns when you know you're not going to have to spend that. I think Compound is miles better. And the gluttonous mass. And I think he's the best player in season two so far. And his, uh, his question was, um, what do they bring to their respective teams? So, so, so oh, you can play combine with alchemists? Yeah, alchemist union. And so engineers. Absolutely, yeah. Um, for the alchemy union, you are literally saying, we're very good at goal scoring and you're not scoring against me. Yeah. And, and it, I think alchemists are so squishy playing yeah. that sort of team, you need somebody to take a bit of... Of is he two inch melee? In compound. compound, I think he is. Yeah. Well, that's good because I I played uh, I got a game in against Jeff Porrett this week, um, and I used my Alchemist Union and I took the standard lineup. And as much as I, um, one thing I noticed is, and I think it's a more subtle change on the wider spectrum of the Arata is, I don't think by any means it has ruined Decimate or Hemlock, but my team going from four two inch melee models to two, Makes it difference. was huge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I would probably drop Decimate for Compound. Mm. So I would be taking Midas, Flask, Vitriol, Mist, Hemlock, Compound. Giving me just that three two inch melee. Because if you think about it, if you've got two, only got two models with um, a two inch melee, if you lose one of them and they've got a model with unpredictable movement, yeah. They're, they're, they're just going to outplay it because it'll just dodge the first one and then it's going to be tough. Um, so for me, I think Compound is the best model in season two, but I don't, I've not had time to really look at Chisel. Have you? Uh, stat wise, not played her, but I absolutely love her stat wise. She, I think she's a better, and I'll get views for this, but a better version of Cosset. Uh, no, she is. So she we'll, is. we'll see how that plays out. Uh, and as I want to play Masons next as my next team, I'm really looking forward to Chisel. Just a quick shout out going back to the Alki Union. I played Alex Hall. Um, I heard he smashed Vassal, you. And he played an Alki Union team, exactly <laughs> the lineup you just suggested. Yep. Uh, yeah, and he smashed me 12-2. I just didn't have a chance. Did Compound have a big effect on the game? Uh, Compound took, had the winning takeout to kill Dirge to make it 12-2. And the thing, the thing so, is, I found 
with tenderizer, I took him to Mansfield. Speaking like digressing massively onto goalkeepers, I, I he did nothing all all tournament in in stuff. Yeah, I think he got one free charge. He got one. That's it. He got one free charge off, and he had one influence for three games. But it's not what he did. It's what it's that area it, it, of yeah. It, the it was the control, and I won my last game because the fishermen were terrified of him. And frankly, they should have engaged him. And it's an intimidation piece. So I'm massively behind the goalkeepers. Yeah, I I be uh, I'll be interested to come back to this in a few months when people have sort of figured out how to play against them. You treat um, them like brick. But yeah, you literally people treat, just and you pull them off scared. four inches. Like one thing I've learned is. The first couple of games, Tenderizer was exactly four from my goal to maximise his charge range. I'd actually play him more like two. So, so someone, so, so someone push doing pushes, more. your chain grabs and stuff is inevitable no matter how close to the goal you are, but the rest of it, you've got a bit of Lean leniency with. Yeah. So that was a great question, Oliver. Thank you. And he says chisel. That is all. Awesome. Um, yeah, and um, chisel's a beautiful model. Oh, so we, we, had, we didn't talk about Sakana really, but um, I don't think he... He brings enough difference. He does to the more way of what the fish play. do. Yeah, and so he's got not, a bit he doesn't of change the way they play. Really, it's not saying he's not a great player. He just and I'd like to see it. people's views on compound with engineers because yes. I've not had any experience. Someone let us know if you've so. tried it on Vassal, or by the time next week's video is up, you may have actually done it in the flesh. So. Thank you, Oliver, for your questions. And the next up is Sean Benson. And he says, do you think that teams like Butchers and Fishermen are more popular and more played due to their straightforward play style? Do you think there is more strength in Guild Ball by skewing your list towards scoring or takeouts? And your name suggestions for the show are Give and Go or Tav and Talk. Um, I do like both those names, but I'm properly in love with the ones we mentioned <laughs> earlier at the moment. So his question is, so do, do you think teams like Butchers and Fishermen are more popular? Uh, I think I think yes. yeah I think there's two two keys to this. The first one is that they're the two flagship teams. They were the poster so, teams for yeah. season one. It they're the ones that people butchers. see more Absolutely. often, and the one that uh, Matt Hart and Rich uh, play themselves. So yep. they're, they're quite a lot of love for them. Mm. So I think that's a key thing that a lot of people see them and pick them up. But also I do think that uh, they're the two ends of the spectrum. So in terms of play styles, they. They are deceptively seen as more straightforward in terms of when you put them on the table, butchers are going to run and hit stuff. Fish are, um, just fish are going to try and score and run Absolutely. away from things. But obviously, it is much more complex than that, and when you start playing them competitively and against better players... The best butchers teams now are scoring two goals. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, um, but yes, I do agree with your statement. The, the fish and butchers are more popular, and... To be honest, if people ask me what is a good team to learn the game with, I do suggest one of those. Yeah. Because you are you, you will you will natively do well because of how clear their playstyle is. And then the second part, do you think there's more strength in Guildboard by skewing your list towards scoring or takeouts? Does he mean either or? Yeah, or I think he means he mean? um, Oh no, I think it's do you think um, it's, it's scoring easier or take to win better. yeah by scoring um, or by taking out? I think scoring. at the moment. Oh, I completely disagree. I think taken out. I think at the moment there is a Do you lean know what? towards. I, I, I've heard this in an interview. Teams. How some of the I think it was Jamie Perkins on Guild Ball tonight. Check Guild Ball tonight out. Spreading the Guild Ball love, aren't we? Yeah, we spreading are spreading the Guild Ball love. Um, and he was saying how that was very much the case during through the playtest phases, and now the game has matured to a good balance. And I think we're starting to see that. Like you say, the Butchers teams are now start, starting to score two goals. Three months ago, I wouldn't even pay attention to a Butchers team trying to score a goal. But I think we're starting to shift. But it'd be interesting what um, anyone watching thinks. Stick it in the comments. It'd be good to hear. Yeah, um, cool. and I think it's a it's a mixture of both now because trying to just get six takeouts is quite difficult, and trying to score just three goals is also quite difficult. Yep. So it's a bit of a balance between the two now. I think. Cool. Um, next question is from our friend of the show, as he always says, friend on of the WCW, show. Steve Newton. Check who cares um, who wins out on <laughs> iTunes and Android slash podcast things. Um, what does Jebent Gerun Verkhead Nukan mean? No uh, idea. This is the name of their episode six. So if you haven't checked it out, go and watch, uh, go and listen, sorry, on their podcast. Do you know what it means? Um, off the top of my head, we I think it means you're fucking wrong. <laughs> I'm going to test you. This is because great content for that you guys. is all that Steve ever seems to say nowadays. You're all fucking wrong. So you, are you, you going to actually type so this you, in? So you figured out if we're doing swearing on the channel by this question. So, Thanks, man. so I will carry on <laughs> while um, while Jay busily. You, you, you read the rest of this question. Um, um, who is the greatest striker in the game? Uh, I know Steve will probably say Brisket because um, he loves her. Blint. Um, I think I would go for... It's not missed anymore. It was missed. Nah. It's not missed anymore. 
I think especially if you factor that we've got footballers in the game I think it's Flint yeah I think I'd go with Flint close control with Flint double activating Flint Um, he's a bit easier to kill than some um, but he does have armour and charmed mail Uh, so I think and where'd they go does he has he got where'd they go Uh -uh. you're fucking wrong (laughs) what does it mean I'm not swearing on my channel I like it too much you probably can't see that it means you're just fucking wrong one word out that was good. Yeah, but you were wrong. Well, you were wrong. I was fucking wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers for the question. And his Winner. last bit. Uh, do you want to read that last bit out? Uh, who will win the grudge match between Battlehammer and GBI at the Scaldic Shield? So if you, um, haven't, I've not if you haven't heard, um, Jay in our last video yep. challenged the Battlehammer to a 2v2 at the Scaldic Shield. Are we actually going to do this? I think, I, think the evening? I think we're going to have a Saturday evening, we're going to go for a curry and a few beers, and then I think back here and we Come back it. here and then we'll just we'll hammer each other. Battle. We'll battle hammer each other. <laughs> they're going down. I, I'm going to now. Yeah. 12-0. <laughs> Uh, how has anyone ever played a two-on-two properly? Are we playing with? Basically, we both discuss how we move. I don't know. We're gonna. They just won't get we back. Might have to be give, so pissed what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. They'll be too drunk to know. We'll just lie them down, and when they wake up, we'll tell them. We <laughs> we're but, there with aching asses. <laughs> dude, you're really lowering this video. We're gonna win 12-0. We are absolutely gonna smash it. And again, spreading the guild ball love. Check out the battle hammer on YouTube for craziness and fun and frolics and battle reports of YouTube they're, men, they're grown men they should know better they're alright we like them so next up guys is Gil Ball tonight I'm gonna I'm pretty sure this is Phil Phil messaged me the other day any for all of you as well um, social media now anything done by Gil Ball tonight is Phil is Phil, okay. Phil. So, hi Phil hi Phil we love you Phil the original Gil Ball podcast yeah this is the inspiration for all of us I guess correct so. <laughs> you lit the way yeah <laughs> go forward my children thank you Bill Phil uh, what is your opinion about painting points or awards in tournaments? Does it encourage the hobby or does it alienate those without the skill to compete? Do you make commissioned pieces in, in allegedly? Um, so I've run some tournaments. I don't believe in painting points because you are playing the game. You shouldn't get points for painting just in an event. I don't believe in painting points. I do, however, believe in fully painted as a rule. Yeah. Like, I'm massively, and I know some people don't like painting, but I do believe in fully painted. And then the next part of the question is, um, let's see. I think that there should be. I think that there should be maybe painting awards. But, exactly. But they're that's, separate that, that's to, the next thing. And to who wins a tournament? I think they're a nice add-on. Yeah, to, we really encourage painting awards as well. I mean, at the Scaldic Shield on the 14th and 15th of November, which you should buy a ticket. There's only eight tickets left for day one. We're going to hit 32. Uh, we've got a lot of people still maybes as well. So if you're going to get a ticket, get it now. Um, so I think we have for the best painted team, it's 30 pounds, and to be confirmed prize. And, to be and, and we're also doing £15 for the best goal. This is Steamforge store credit and to be confirmed prize. So w- there's effectively £45 of store credit plus prizes for painting. Um, yeah, I don't believe in painting points, but I massively believe in sort of best painting prizes at events. Do yes, you agree? I completely agree. Good. And yeah. then the last part of his question says, do you make commission pieces um, in legible no. You cannot enter a model you haven't painted yourself. I think that's... Uh, Unless it's important. you and you can put mine in. Yeah, that, that, that's it. If Chris Hay has painted something for me, Chris can enter one of my models, but the person who painted it has to be present and that has to be his entry. I yeah, only believe in, say that it's one entry per yeah. person. Yeah. But if, if Chris has painted two teams at an event and he wants a team he's not using, that is okay. But commission painters, painting no, or I will win them all. <laughs> James of English the Painting Studios is painted crazy all good. Yeah. Check him out. Uh, so thanks for that, uh, Phil. Uh, next question uh, from Jordan Gardner. Uh, what are your hopes for the captains for season two, and how do you hope they fit into existing teams, and how would you like to see them differ from existing captains? Uh, so, so we could talk very le- at length about this, but do you want to just briefly touch on your hopes for captains? So my hopes for captains of season two are that... I don't want the same version of what I have with a different name. I want something that can change the playstyle of my team. I want something that gives me a different variety of butcher or brewer or mason. And I also want something that maybe gives me synergies. So 
Stoker becomes a viable option because Stoker isn't used that much let's be honest yeah. and well not so much after the amount but Catalyst and these players that we are not using because they, they, they don't really cut the grade I want something that will bring them in because I, because this game is so close too and I really want it to be something where every model is a viable option in the team so I want them to keep the, the basic theme of the Butchers but just bring something new to it and add a twist to the team yeah I just I mean to... unfortunately we don't know anything about the new captain yet so no, just, it... just to add on I, I, I want them to keep their same um, play style in terms of butchers are about fighting fishermen are about oh, yeah, scoring I agree, I agree with but that but I achieving want a, it in a different yeah, way I want yeah. a different take on it so I don't want to get to a stage where you can put the butchers down and you can do everything and you can put the fishermen down and you can do everything yeah. because that just makes it yeah, no, monotone yeah. you, you need to keep the core sort of Principles build of your of team. team but like let, let, let's give an example so like the masons yeah. at the moment the mate so honour is a bit of a beat stick you can dish out the damage and she can really mess with the fun fundamentals of the game that um, and we've seen Chisel yeah. who is a combat monster so I would like someone who could really work in combination with, with Chisel, Chisel yeah. uh, and really make them a beat uh, like forget not forget about it but doesn't need the double activating twin activating linked activating get that and just focus on even maybe a bit more football yeah and give give you two football options in a Mason's team through Flint and Mason's captain yeah. without taking to Union so that would that, that's the sort of thing I mean yeah. I hope that's made sense we tend to ramble a lot um, <laughs> if you want um, any more in-depth answers let us know exactly what you want next week and please answer a question next week that goes to everyone so next we have Justin Cader we like Justin we do like I Justin Justin's I thought he was supposed to be here tonight yeah. he's not turned up yet I don't think uh, but... and massive respect to all our Manchester gamers who are getting involved in this Q&A um, so Justin Cader says name he sent me this the other day actually it made me laugh the guild the ball and the ugly so I'm the guild ball informer and you're the ugly yeah yeah happy with that I agree so <laughs> and then he's put a game of two sharks I think you're just being a bit of a fisherman fanboy there Justin <laughs> no or Chris and, Chris Jay. and Jay why is Jay See, and Chris it just What's flows doing? better Chris and Jay or Chris and Jay's comedy dugout or dude dude where's my question <laughs> I quite like that one. <laughs> I read the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Guild and Girls. <laughs> I'm not seeing that one before. It'd be uh, nice. Yeah, good work, Justin. You made me laugh a lot. We could wear like gone. blonde wigs next time. Be the Guild and Girls. No, mine's in the wash. Uh, <laughs> so we like those questions, though, Justin. Keep them coming. <laughs> good, good work, buddy. Um, question: Ultimate yeah. goal scoring slash beta team non league What does he mean by non league So, so any he means anything. You just uh, get six players. Uh, okay, so beta team. Ox is the captain. Uh, yes. Chisel. Mm, yes. Okay. Chisel. Okay. Cosset. Yep, I'd have Cosset. I'm not going for furious in this. So we've got Ox, Chisel, Cosset, Honor. Non legal. Take captain. <laughs> Honor. Yeah. Obulus, get loads of influence, it's going to be the BTS team. <laughs> what is that? Uh, is that six? No mascot. That's five. Um, we need a mascot. Princess, because it's got well, three damage well, no, on no, no, it's got to be um, the monkey. Marvels, because he can oh. tool up. He can tool people up. Yeah. Imagine... So, yeah, quick answer for the BTS, and let's do a, an, an equally quick off-the-cuff ultimate goal scoring uh, team. Vitriol. Flint. Flint. Uh, Mist. Friday. Brisket. Do we not have to have a captain shark? Shark Friday brisket. Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. Drop brisket, put Angel in. No, drop Friday, put Angel in. Um, okay, Justin, for you, in the next couple of weeks or months, you need to get round to mine and we need to play a game recorded on here for the match report of our what we've just said as our footballing team against our B team. He's and calling you out, wins. Justin. Uh, so Chris is going to be doing a lot of uh, Guild Ball Informer match reports coming soon. <laughs> and you'll be you. on this first. So we are going to do a non legal Ultimate BT versus Ultimate goal scoring and, and I'm going to be there to laugh because that's you'll be hilarious left. that's yeah. fine Let's do it. and his second question is having been on the receiving end of a missed goal route how do I stop him slash her it looks like a female <laughs> it looks like a female that's everybody just does keep saying her yeah. um, I keep calling Decimate she's got a big cloak and a hood I call Decimate really him and I just get thrown up so um, um, now obviously with um, with the errata and the loss of momentous tackle and one hit mm -hmm. that makes it slightly less um, compound makes damaging. it near impossible. All for the goalkeepers, yeah, compound with the extra 
um, influence to shoot. Um, Jamie Giblin did a really good trick against me and he had Fangtooth positioned in front of his goal with the three inch aura as rough ground and it just physically wasn't possible for me with miss to where they go and charge and get within range because as soon as you hit that rough ground you lose two inches of movement so I ended up stopping about nine inches away which meant I then was not close enough to shoot so, so Justin's a fish player so another quick answer is you. get Kraken to headbutter to death uh, gutter drag her yeah. in and kill her yeah loads of ways um, the, 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 the errata has helped a little bit because she was a little bit over the curve um, things or, like goalkeepers now are brilliant or if I, to be honest if I was a fish player and Mist was threatening I would probably be willing to let Mist score so that I could then kill Mist and then retrieve the ball myself from the kick out and score myself and you get six to their four yeah. and then go from there so yeah don't always worry about every goal sometimes you've got to let them happen and play for the responsive play back the other way. Yep. But yeah, hope that's helped, Justin. So next question is... Uh, so this is from Jamie Winus or Winus. Yep. Uh, ditch the pen. We've already um, nerfed the pen now. Do you know what? If you guys don't ask questions every week, the pen is back. It's coming back. But if they don't ask questions, they won't watch Fine. So. His sideline repairs is his suggestion. That's good. The name. That was up there, but I think it's been top on the ball, man. I'm loving on the ball. Um, and no question. Okay, well, thanks for the thanks suggestion. Thanks for the suggestion. Uh, good suggestion. Get a question in next cool. week. Next up is Michael Buckley. Thank you for asking a question, Michael. It's much appreciated. And he says, I don't know if it's been... He's not asking a question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, man. He says, I don't know if it's been said yet, but my idea for a name is Bonus Time. Keep up the good work. Bonus Time's like cool. Bonus time, yeah. um, That's quite good one. I think there are other formats of show that could use that name better than this. So we'll keep that in the locker room for... Um, it's in the vault. And like bonus time. what do you win for that going in the vault of show names? <laughs> Give yourself a high five done and then you want to do the next one uh, another one from Guild Ball tonight so Phil uh, will you ever get a sexy backdrop like Guild Ball tonight, tonight? we were we've talked about this this week for one uh, yeah, tonight we're, as well we're, gonna, um, yeah, we're, we're, gonna we're, get we're at the North Gaming Centre tonight and it's a little bit of background noise and stuff but no we've been discussing getting some uh, banners we're going to really up the production value of these we're going to get a bright orange one with a big hammer no are we not no oh is that not those no what, who are we? Look at your t-shirt. Oh right, yeah, we'll get a black one with, with a logo on the back. And a picture of Aversing Greed. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Phil, we are going to get them. Phil one. actually suggested this to me this week. We're having a chat about making videos. And, and we're going to get two servants to hold it up. Yeah, maybe. Yeah? It's kind of illegal, he says. <laughs> anyway, cheers, Phil. And the next question is from Benjamin Pointer. Thank you, Benjamin. He says, I've only just come across this game. Well, we're glad you found it, first of all. And with the season two stuff coming out, I'm finding it hard to figure out what's going on. <laughs> is there any way official I can find up-to-date news on the game and new releases? And his suggestion for a show is injury time. Which I don't really like. Sorry, man. Uh, it's a good football one, but yeah, we don't really have injury time in Guild And we're, we're not so. slating any of these suggestions. We realise how tough it is, and that's why we've put it to you guys. We haven't come up with one. Yeah. So. Uh, remember as well, the winner um, will be getting a metal tenderizer and a resin alternate cracker. Cracking, yep. Good stuff. So his question is: I've just come across a game, season two stuff coming out. Finding it hard. To, so you're finding it hard to figure out what's going on. I will say I'm very glad you've come across the game. And uh, one thing I will say about Guild Ball, I say to a lot of people, is it has a very steep learning curve. Yeah. I think. Like you're going to be on the receiving end of a three missed goals <laughs> yep. and a 12 nil. Yeah. You're going to get 12 nil by the fish. You're going to get 12 nil by the but. You're going to get 12 nil by everybody. Yeah. And it really does have a steep learning curve. But all I will say is stick with it and a lot of it will stick sooner than you think and eventually you will come out on the other side and you'll have been built up a base knowledge of the other seven teams um, and you'll really come into your own um, so do us a favour let us know which team you're playing with yep, we and we will help you further to try and get you doing well and, and if, you if you listen to uh, if you watch um, Jamie's um, earlier video this week uh, spreading the love uh -huh. it uh, details lots of other podcasts and YouTube channels uh, and Facebook groups where you can get involved listen to the shows it will pick, you'll be able to pick up some tactics and tips finding out all the new season 2 releases mm -hmm. there's a Steam Ford's weekly uh, news YouTube channel on a yep. Tuesday 
which will uh, detail upcoming releases. If you look on sites like uh, the Guild Wars store and the Element Games site, I think they've even listed, the players are listed as Season 2 players. Um, there are, if you have if you have Apple, there are uh, apps that you can get, the Guild Ball Manager app that has all of the player cards on them. So you can, if you don't have access to the rule book, you can have a look at all those, uh, just to keep you up to date with things. Vassal, there's a mass. There's a there's there a is literally a, a mass, and, and the other one I will uh, shamelessly point you to is if you go into our videos and click on the season one team review section, you will get the meet the series, yep. um, which is always good for learning your team and a base idea of what your enemies do. So thank you for the question, Benjamin. As always, appreciated. Let us know what team you're using next week. Uh, the next one is from Adam Caldicott. Uh, which guild do you think has underperformed this season uh, but has the most potential in future seasons? Uh, and his name is a question of sport or a question of blood sport. So I quite like a question of sport. Do you watch it? Um, On TV? Possible copyright. Oh, yeah, probably there. of blood sport. <laughs> But, and I do uh, work for the Beeb, so I yeah. can't really be brandishing that around. Uh, <laughs> um, so so which guild do you think has underperformed this season? No, I do have the answer to this. I have I, two suggestions. Okay, so I will give you my answer and my explanation before we go further. My answer is the engineers. Thought you'd say that. But that is not because of the team and the rules and the skill. I think you've not played them yet. Yeah, wait, wait till I play them. I'm going to own this stuff. Um, that is literally down to it. a lot of people don't like the aesthetic of the engineers, which is understandable. Yep. Everybody's personal taste, and they just haven't seen as much table time as the other guilds yep. across the board. So I don't think they are underachieving, but they, for me, are the one that I think to the masses will seem like they're underachieving. And there's actually a bounty at the that's moment. That's what I was going to say. That's why the bounties out by Steam Forged. They are the only team not to win an official sanctioned event. And if you can come, the first one to claim this is the Skaldic Shield. If you can come on Saturday the 14th of November and win, including the first prize, you will get £150 of Steam Forged store credit. Ooh. So check it out. So I'd say the engineers, and there's my reasoning. You've got two. Yeah, well, my one of my first one was engineers, and exactly the same reason as you've just given. So um, yeah, and my second one is Masons. Um, I don't know why, but when I read the rules and see them played by people, I think they are amazing. They break some such fundamentals That's of the it. game. It was it was Guild Ball tonight who really pushed that. I would expect I'd be expecting them to win everything. I really I think, really think, I think they're they've only amazing. won. I was looking at, at somewhere online. You can see. Um, I think it's on the forum in the tournament one. You can see how many tournaments each guild has won. And at the moment, it's like Union 5, Fish 4. And that's what annoys me about the whole oh, Union broken thing. The fish are right behind them. Yeah. And people, say, some say the fish are underpowered. But anyway, and I think the Masons have only won one, and it was quite early on. Yeah. Um, but the, the Masons are one of the teams that I say, if you invest some serious time into a team that can really mess with the fundamentals of the game, you've got... You've got the gold scoring team build with Flint and Mist yep. from Union. You can honor can deal a scary amount of damage. You've got Marbles tooling up. It really can be a deadly, deadly team if used. By and now, and now with Chisel coming in season Chisel, two. Chisel. Um, um, uh, we don't know don't about know the, the captain, captain or the mascot or who else? The veteran. The veteran. Yeah. So it's exciting times. Um, I'd agree with the Masons, but I, again, I definitely don't think. But they have won a tournament. So yes, I don't uh, think they're is. underperforming. I just don't think they're they're getting less table time than some of the others that's it yeah agreed yeah great cool next up is Marshall Han thank you for getting in contact Marshall and he has said the Chroniclers Guild what's a chronicler is it a someone who chronicles <laughs> oh legendary play um I'm not so keen on those but um I quite like legendary, legendary play but Maybe again for a different sort of show, maybe for yeah. sort of a weekly. That, that's what's drawing me to on the up. ball because it, it does reference the fact that we're, we're, we're answering questions. And stuff. Um, yeah. yeah. So thank you for the crowd. We had another one that was rubbish. Um, <laughs> Stuart, not the question. The fact that I barely read anything. Um, Stuart Phillips got in contact. Thank you, bud. And he says, "Do you have a team or person that you just can't or couldn't beat? How do you overcome these difficulties?" My example is butchers. I I can't seem to not make some sort of misplay or literally get outplayed. At this stage for me, it's clearly, clearly psychological. I think that's what it means. Philological, in case that's a word that we're not. Quite psychological. Used. Yeah. Um, for me, it was always, uh, and it has been, as always, the butchers. Well, um, I remember our first game was. But when we first met, butchers fish. Was you it? Use your fish, yeah. and I use my butchers, and, and it was like a twelve. It was like a turn three, twelve nil, yeah. smash in the face thing. And I've had the same with butchers. I've also had it with fish once. 
the true power of gut and string was being used right. And I've had it with most teams, and the beauty of this game is you can stand there pulling your hair out going, this is grim, but you will get it. Yeah. It, will, it, will, it will, you will figure out, you will get it, and one day you'll really manage it well. And it's just about perseverance and identifying key threats and abilities and trying to shut them down. Yeah. So overcoming the difficulties is just playing them more. Play more people yeah. with more butchers right. and don't be scared because that's exactly. why I started to think, oh, I just don't want to ever play when one you of the cower, butchers. They're kill you, yeah. but, then, but then that means that I never get practice playing the butchers and whenever I meet them in a tournament, I'll get smashed because I've not so wanted you, to play what, them. So. What you want to do, bud, is let us know the team you're using yeah. against the butchers. And we'll give you and some specific help. counters. Key things are like blind and things blind. that can slow them down, things that can reduce the attack. They, and they don't have a vast amount of models with two-inch melee, so if you can get any two-inch melee models in you and save momentum for counter-attacking you can try and nullify them that way hey little dude we won't go too far into it let us know what team you're using and we'll give you some help on pointers next week agreed agreed cool next one next one is andy scott who i only recently realized was badly punched otter oh okay it's, the same it's guy. tough isn't it with the twitter yeah. handles and the people so i know andy so. scott hello uh, andy thank you so thanks um, for the, the question what does badly punched otter do he does something he, media for he does a blog yeah he's got a blog and he's is on that, all the facebook pages so go and check uh, badly punched otter on twitter yeah, i'm not sure what uh, and doing. apologies for missing you on spreading the guild ball love but we oh. are now spreading the guild ball love a little bit so, um, so his um, name for the show just listen can you suss the guild ball reference uh, I think maybe in um, in some of the narrative in the book. Isn't that like the first word? Isn't it? Is just, just listen. listen. Are we right? Are we stupid? Let us know, please, bud. Um, I like momentous tackle. He it's likes a bit of a mouthful. Your momentous tackle, but it's a bit of a mouthful. Are you low? No, no, no. Sorry, viewers. I like yeah, momentous, momentous tackle. Tackle's cool. So, do you like any of the others more on the ball? Let us know what you think. Um, so we've already seen Brisket is going to be the first veteran. Yes, we have. So this have was seen, spoiled. I you, saw the, um, saw the, the artwork. artwork it was leaked at Spiel. Yep. Oh, she looks She looks like she's took a beating, but she looks nasty. She looks really deadly now. She's going to kill so. some stuff. I'm looking forward to seeing the rules for that. Uh, who will be the other guild veterans and why? Oh. With a smiley face. Okay. We don't know about any of this. So let's... Uh, let's guess. Right. So let's start let's with go through the Alchemist. Who would you like to see as the veteran? Whether they are that or not, we're not saying we don't know anything, we're not saying this is who they're going to be, but who would you like? Who gets not very much table time? Do you know who I think going to get it? Um, Mercury. Just, do, you think? do you know why? And, they, and, and this is no, probably not the reason. It's such a cool model. If you could veteran the dude who can do flames and stuff, it's yeah, going to be another cool one. Flames come out and, of and the fact that he's doing that has really cool opportunities for new profiles, new abilities. Yeah, and maybe the captain can play on more fire stuff, do stuff with veteran. burning. Oh, imagine so, veteran and, vitriol. Oh, <laughs> veteran double V. I think vitriol's too good. I know to, she's to amazing. I, I think the, I want vitriol. I'd like to see all the veterans being AI and underused season one yeah. model. So yeah, so that is the alchemist, the brewers, um, and fire guy. The fire guy, Stoker. Stoker. Oh, no, Stoker, yeah. Stoker. Veteran Stoker. Uh, um, yeah, I'd like to see With, that. like, all a burnt helmet that's all mangled. You know, like... Proper char. In, in Game of Thrones, yeah. when they pour the metal yeah, that, helmet Oh, on. that'd be cool. Like that. Okay, and then Butchers we know about is Brisket. But, which is Brisket. Cool. Um, engineers. Ooh. Ratchet. I Do you know who I'd like to see? Salvo. <laughs> now, I know he's really good, and I don't think that's what the veteran players are about. But I like the fluff. Do you know the fluff on the engineers? Not So, clever. basically... Salvo's sister used to play for the Engineers Guild, oh, and, I, I, and I think yes. Melissa killed her. Not, not intentionally. And then Quistis was her name, was it? Quistis, yeah. yeah. Do you know that's a Final Fantasy character? Yes, I do know. That. Yeah. Are you a Final Fantasy fan? Uh, I was back in the day. I'm gonna go Final nerd out off camera. That's cool. So, um, yeah. So after Melissa killed his sister, yeah. or his sister died. Um, they made a robot sort of memorial, and that is Velocity. Mm. So I would like to see some sort of Maybe salvo a Quistis where model. he start. Oh, so Quistis would be good. Quistis coming back. Velocity two, where it becomes more like Quistis. Or I would like to see Salvo getting angry and after, you know, just go a bit mental. Yeah, Ballista. Uh, Ballista, exactly. So that's what I'd like to see. Uh, so that's engineers, brewers, alchemists, butchers, masons. Ooh, I, I would say Harmony just because she's a bit too. Squishy. She's a little sister isn't so, yeah, she, if she yeah. Becomes, yeah harmony money's on harmony uh, morticians Ooh. Cosset. Oh, God. <laughs> crazy gone crazy cost it would be cool cast oh no cast i don't know any of them i love i love the mortician characters 
I, I'm thinking of this from like a fluff point of view. Um, I si yeah. not silence, not silence. I'd like. I think I'd like Cosset, who like she's gone. She's just gone completely batshit mental crazy, and she's like tack ten as base, <laughs> and she's just. But she does damage to herself when she attacks things. Do you know what I want? So that'd be amazing. Do you know what I really want? Yeah. Veteran mascots. I was going to say that to start with. I was going to say it'd be amazing. That'd be so cool. Um, um, yeah. So, so who have we not covered? Um, union. Union. A, vet, a union, union veteran. Who could the union veteran be? Uh, I think Fangtooth, and he's doubled in size, and he can't actually move. Give him Wolverine so. claws. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Steam forged. Um, uh, you can steal you any can of my that. ideas for the sum of take one that. million pounds. Uh, Everything greed. Veteran Alvis yeah, and Green. So he's on, he's on the, he's on like he's in a. No, screw that. The engineers built Green a little robot, so he drives around. Oh, a little car. Yeah. That video was red. Tyco take. <laughs> oh no, I think it should be Alvis with the the leads that you have on with children. Oh, you have know, you seen the Goonies? The you have yeah. Do you know the thing Data has where it like fires a <laughs> boxing glove? Alvis should have that with Green on, so he can just go ping and stab people. And he's um, like, yeah, for and, and reach. Hey, you guys. I think we're getting a bit carried away with this. Um, is that everyone? Yeah, um, is that all the team? I think it's seven. I always miss a team Fish. whenever I listen. Fish, uh, veteran, veteran, veteran. Grey scales. <laughs> With two walking sticks. <laughs> 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 he's a new goalkeeper. <laughs> On a zimmer frame. Literally, literally. And he can smack stuff out of the air with his zimmer frame. <laughs> One of them sticks with tennis balls. <laughs> like a white stick. Like walking <laughs> Anyway, we're getting far yeah, too salt, carried with away. salt running off. Yeah. The boss, like fakes to throw the ball and salt running uh, Fish, 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 fish. Um, <laughs> siren. Veteran Siren would be nasty. Like yeah, she's... Siren. That'd be good. Cool. And she gets Puppet Master. She's halfway there with seduction. Yeah. So she's evolved to become some super being. I don't think they can give Puppet Master to a non captain just because giving making it like the They can do what they like, they design the game. That is true, I don't think. Is that all? Is that all? I think that's all of them. So if we missed anyone. There's our well. probably rather childish carried away rumblings of who should be the veterans. Let us know what you guys think. Uh, where are we up to? Next you... one, gonna Go, gonna wow. Um Gonna Wow. Let us know who you are going to while because um, some of you might know today I have filmed um, basically the show that we based this on, which is Speak Friend in Question on the GBHL podcast. And I'm sure going to while ask the question over there. Mm, so we may be a, a QA fan. machine today. Let us know who you are going to while because the name sounds very familiar. Anyway, question What do you think ca calculus brings to the table that Hemlock doesn't? And why would you not just drop her for the other? And I don't think the answer should be have both because that doesn't make calculus better at it than Hemlock. Name, wrap around the topics. Um, okay. Wrap um, around. Do you like that name? No. no. Yeah. <laughs> calculus so, isn't better than Hemlock. Well, I think that uh, pre of Arta, you would have Hemlock every time. Uh, she does the same, pretty much the same thing with the blind uh, when the nauseous blast. Uh, six is to hit, two inch melee, so it was just better all around. Now with the Arata and it's Hemlock there. being one inch melee, five plus, so Hemlock's four and one. Yep, so she's so better there. I, would I, take the five. I think that what, what Calculus offers obviously is now they're both one inch melee, uh, other teams I think will not be worried about engaging Hemlock anymore. The problem now, well, the better thing now with, with Calculus is she makes things poison when they engage her yeah but on the flip side so, it, Hemlock doesn't just have blind she has the smelling salts one she does which can pick players up on the floor um, it's Hemlock for me she just has better players and I would rather have 5 plus defence than 4 as 1 I'm, I think I'm gearing towards Calculus um, you're wrong <laughs> but I like more pure stuff and yes. Calculus is a better model yeah. for me it is very close now so you, I can, think you, can, you can lean to a pure guild team without hindering and yourself. oh and um, now Catalyst has been made better, you will see Catalyst in more Alchemist teams, which means um, Calculus is poison from engaging stuff, uh, will become come into play a bit more. Yep. Um, so I, eh, I, I think Calculus for me, Hemlock for you. So That's you it, we're not always going to agree. Well, cheers for the question, you've definitely divided the camp on that one. 
next one. Uh, Ian Marley. Lord Ian Marley. Ian Marley. The Lord. Marley, Ian Marley. Uh, there we go. That's him. That's good. Uh, goalkeepers seem to benefit from being near your own goal, naturally. Uh, do you think that this position will disrupt the play style of some teams? As if you have received the ball and don't bother scoring early, then it's like having losing a player, as the goalkeeper may become diminished. Uh, this might not be the case going into season three, as Met has changed, but it stands... As it stands, he thinks that um, cannot get them. He doesn't think that they'll fit really. So, what's our view on that in terms of goalkeepers? He's also put, "I am a fool at times." You are a fool most of the time, but it's why I love you. I I think He's that been trolling he, you this I, week. I, I think he has a point, though. I, I don't. Think, I don't agree because I think if you if you were able to see your opponent's team. Um, in tournaments before picking your own team um, then if you were if you were just looking at a completely beat stick team against you you may drop the goalkeeper because you may think that they won't have anything yeah, to play yeah but again if we talk about the complete beat stick team which you might refer to as the butchers they're all scoring two goals now and the thing is I understand what you're saying about receiving but it's not going to be that way for the full game when you put in a goal your opponent's coming back at you at the end of the day um, so it's and the thing is one thing I've found is yeah you might say oh I got nothing out of him for two turns but I can say that for any given model some of them amazing models in any game there isn't enough influence to have six models doing great things some of them are just positioning pieces every turn yeah um, so I think there's a massive place for goalkeepers. Um, Ian's an engineer player. Well, compound. Get him in, man. Get him in too. Yeah. Um, played him on Vassal the other day. He smashed me. me no, 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 no. The engineers ah. didn't smash me. Ian. Mainspring smashed me. Really? Literally. Blow up. Reanimate. Overclock. Oh. Blow up. Hemlock was killed by splash damage from Overclock. Um, Ian's a great. Ian's going to be a really. Good. He's coming to Stockton. We're going to Stockton, aren't we? Supporting uh, the UK. What? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Say what? Yeah, we'll discuss off that. <laughs> <laughs> but is he coming to scold it? No. Uh, you can't get free pass. Uh, he's scared that I'm going. Um, so, uh, I, well, I'm, I'm, I still... Goalkeepers are race. Yeah, well, we disagree on this. We'll agree to disagree. I, I can't really see at the moment me putting them in any teams I play. Really? I would rather have six offensive players uh, or five in the mascot. So I'm yet to be convinced. Uh, I'm going to challenge you to try them. Yeah, I, but again, t I think there's there's a place for compound and tenderizer further up the pitch. They don't have to actually no, be they're, goalkeepers they're, just because they have goalkeeper yeah, on the card. Forty mil bases, but they're three one. They're viable players. Like without that stuff, that's a bonus. So cheers for the question, Ian. And you've also put you didn't read out my show name. You crank, I'm misinformed, sure did. Um, misinformed. Yeah. Yeah, that's a bit of a dig. No, I mean we are missing four. We are. But we're not we're trying not to betray that. So cheers anyway, bud. Uh, next up, do you want to do this one? Yeah, this is uh, this is one of the It's Darren Hay, uh, isn't it? Yeah. Relation? No. Uh, not that I'm aware of, but my mum may you look yeah. alike. I know, I know. I know. It's possible. Yeah. I hope my mum doesn't watch this, but thing is I've heard he's rubbish at Gilboa and you're good. So that, 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 there's well, it no skips, family genes. It skips a generation, ah, okay. like baldness. So we let, let, so. let's leave that alone for a minute. Anyway, so Next, he, he says. He says, uh, ahoy ahoy. Ahoy hoy. Uh, ahoy hoy. Uh, clearly, Jay is a big fan of avarice and greed. Yes, uh, I He's am. very rarely seen them on the pitch. What is the best way to use them? Uh, cheers, fellas. And his suggestion for a name is Jerkins for goalposts. <laughs> Jerkins? <laughs> I like jumpers for goalposts. What is, is a jerkin a, an old man's term for trousers? Or does he mean... Do you eat it? Pickled jerkins? He, he doesn't Pickled mean jerkins. what you're about to say. I don't know what he means. Um, avarice and greed. So, the best way to use them is all the time. <laughs> <laughs> avarice and greed are the coolest thing ever. I think we have yet Have you to seen see... my Avarice and Greed? I have seen your Avarice How and Greed. How cool is it's my... the best. So, I received my best. Avarice and Greed from James of Yggdrasil Painting Studios this week, along with the rest of the union. Uh, the video will probably go up before this one. I'm actually going to put the video up tomorrow. Cool. So, you will see it on Friday. Um, so you will see it before this um, and out of them and I'm sure you'll agree when you watch the video my avarice and greed is jaw droppingly good and I think he's done it because he knows You're going to be the dead. love of my avarice yeah. and greed I think that you've not seen their full potential a lot of people that played them as just a gimmick of dropping greed okay. and running them away but so loads of little points is so the fact that they can split and give you seven models on the pitch that is why they were always in my LP union just to, even at full full size teams, you are guaranteeing a double activation at the end of the turn. That, that, that is what initially drew them to me. And then we look at greed. 
it's only four inches, but he's got a four dice kick, and his playbook is all kinds of crazy. But he has what four health, five yeah, health. Yeah, but do you know what? You go crazy. It's harder. The to downside kill is dirge. if Greed dies unattached, he's gone. Yeah, that's like the a downside. Yeah, he's gone. He's got no ice. But maybe, yeah, maybe that's the way that. And do you know what? He's there to pull off one big heroic cool if thing. If you can get two or four points yeah. out of him, oh god, well worth it. And yeah. it makes a big guy two influence, which is rare as well when they split. Yeah. And they, you can actually start the game separated in because the you start in a, in a yeah. pre-maintenance. Yeah. And then the avarice is such, and especially now he's gone to defense three. Yeah. He's got a momentous singled out on one yeah, hit. That is amazing. Like single, oh, like. I, I think your game really benefits when you start utilising buffs properly. Sometimes, don't do the two damage, buff everyone else for the rest of the turn. Yeah. He has a momentous singled out on one. He, he's a very good big guy in his own right. Is he 4 7 move as well? Let me check. Is he slightly faster? Let me get a So card. I think that, yeah, that um, the singled out against anybody, like any team you put them in. Can you imagine Cosset or yeah. Gutter or any fighty models hitting someone with an extra two dice is just is it takes Gutter to amazing. attack seven. She's going to be silent attack, going for fuck. every yeah, attack. It's massive. For the rest of the turn. For Avarice, is it? Avarice is incredible. The greed thing for me is a bonus. Yeah, he's, he's four, four seven, seven moves. Six tax. Yeah, he's tax six. He's got a kicker one six, fair enough. He's now defence three. Um, he's tough hided with 20 health and defense 3. He's not at armor, he's just defense. No, he's just straight defense. defense, defense three. Tough he's got a momentous singled out on 1 and a knockdown on 2. And then if you go up to like his 4th and 5th column, he's doing 3 damages, sometimes with push. And I, yeah, I he's think great that. Is a big I think you have to think outside the box a bit as well, because like that, on 2 hits, he Ooh. has a double, a 2 inch push. So play him with the engineers, get minefield up, mm. and get Avarice pushing models around. He's going to be yeah. doing loads of damage. And if you, look at, if you look at Greed, an example for Greed is my Alka Union, I've got Mist, Vitriol, and uh, what's the other one? Midas, all threatening the goal as good strikers. So Greed has got a sprint of five, he's also got where they go, and he's got a kick of four inches, so he's, he's another model with a 13-inch threat and goal, and four dice. He can fly in, be crowded out by two people, and, and it, still go for and it, if you, So if you've got sort of Avarice on the centre of the line, and you keep Greed near him, he's on six Greed's defense. the massive glass cannon, you can die just, from one attack. Just but, hiding behind stuff. Yeah, literally, and you've got to bear in mind, when Greed is within four inches of Avarice, he's defence six. Yeah, he's he's six. now the only... No, no, because you can nimble and stuff. But he, he's the only model that, without doing anything, can be stood at defence six straight away. Yeah. Um, I, I think that, like I say, I love Avarice on his own. The green thing just adds for, like, stupid, crazy shenanigans, which the Battle Hammer should be all about. They should be loving Avarice and Greed. I, I think they should be in every battle report that you do. So that, I on. think Avarice and Greed should be in every battle anyway. And the, the Scald it, Good I break. think that I challenge you to play him in every game. Both of you. We want to see, we'll see if that works. And come back to us after the Scaldic Shield, and we'll see how you will have so a you, serious love for Avis. One and two in the podium after playing Avis and Greed. <laughs> Let's not get carried away. But no, that is why I love Avis and Greed, and I love the model. I think the model is insanely cool. So there are some of the many, many reasons I love Avis and Greed. Thank you for the question, bro. Next one. Okay, Tom Henkins, and he. Thank you for the question, by the way, bro. And he says, "What do you think the veteran players will mean for the game?" Uh, let's answer that first. Um, we very much covered this. I just think they're going to bring... So, they're not going to go too far away from their Season 1 versions, I think. So, Brisket has been killed. Well, near near killed. <laughs> and the art we've seen, she looks peed off. So, I think she's going to be a bit more combat. Is outside. it Brisket that gets stabbed in she's the She's nearly front. dead, isn't she? She's, like, left for dead. Yeah. yeah. By... Um, who was it? Game. Yes, it was. It was Snakeskin. Snake. So, she's going to... I think she will still have her kick stats. She's not going to not be a striker anymore. I think she might lose, like, does she have super I, shot? Yeah, she has super. I, so think I think she might just, lose that and get other abilities. I think it's, it's, it's just going to be subtle changes yeah. to certain characters. Um, and a cooler model, because I can't really oh stand God, the yeah, model Oh, God, yeah, that brisket model looks badass. So, so I'd like the new yeah. one. Uh, second question, what what will be the Hunter's play style? I wish I knew. We all want to know how the Hunter's play. I think I think everybody who's... Literally, have you spoke to anyone who said, oh, I'm going to buy the Hunter's Everyone's saying, Everyone I'm going to get the Hunter's Guild. Yeah. So, Steam Forge, if you are watching, please make... A shit ton. I'm definitely of getting hunters skills because we're getting them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Are we gonna volunteer our? Yeah, we, I've got that on my case as well. 
as pundits, I think we should offer our help at Salute and, and see if we can get them free. So, yeah, we are really looking forward to the Hunters. Any um, sort of place what have we seen? All we've seen is the art of Igra. So, bow, right? I think she's got a bow. She's got a bow so now, so... some sort of range. Yeah, abilities. but I don't imagine it, it... It can't be like the engineers that are, like, push knockdown damage. I think it'll be, like, poison arrow. I, and they've been... They have... They like, have, one damage and uh, poison Rich or something Matt, like that. Rich and Rich Matt have been on podcasts saying that they do funny things with momentum or okay. influence, so they might use that in a different way or generate they said it's a, it's a completely different take on it to other teams whatever that means so cool. might be something different um, and I'd quite like to see them have some sort of traps or area things where you come in and you get snared and you lose movement or I think just that would fit in with the hunters yeah they're going to be interesting um, and like wildlings from Game of Thrones yeah, some sort um, of beastly like, or barbaric. Igra, Igra, and I think the name is a bit of a tip Give of the hat to that. It's going to be interesting what they look like. And um, but as you all, we're all crazy excited. And he finishes with, "Thanks for the great show. Well, thanks for watching, and we're glad you're enjoying it. And we hope you stay involved, don't we? We do. Uh, next question is from Alex Hall, who we mentioned earlier that he smashed me on battle. You. Um, so uh, now we know the rules for compound. We can see two different types of goalkeeper within the game: tenderizer and compound. Uh, tenderizer being arguably more aggressive compared to compound more area denial one who makes it harder to score and the other uh, making you invest more influence to shoot which style do you personally prefer uh, you've kind of touched this already compound. you like compound better compound is better than do you think yes. okay. uh, do you think there are other styles of goalkeeper to expect to see being released and if so which team do you see it suiting best the, for the, example the... he says possession hold goalie for the Brewers yeah, well the, on, the only week if, if doing a direct comparison of two the only weak spot of compound is he has to spend one. Granted, he, he brings an extra influence to the table, but he does have to spend one to activate his extra influence to shoot. So, first activation... You need to go with You've got first. to activate compound for it to be in effect. Yeah. So, there, there are times when you're not going to get it, but I, for the reasons I mentioned before, I do have to. Um, and I've used Tenderizer for four or five games, and I may come back after using compound for four or five games and say, actually... Uh, yeah, so I, I've thought at just, the moment it's compound for me, and I love, love, love them. And like Avarice and Green, the rules are second. If I if I properly fall in love with the model, do you like I'm, the model? I'm not a huge com fan. Com like I mean, at, at the Guild Cup, we were very um, privileged. We were allowed to. We had the first eight models, didn't we? Yeah. Um, you see that in the hobby vlog for the Guild Cup. Um, and literally, I grabbed hold of compound that day. I was like. Yeah, it's insanely cool. I can't wait. Mine's coming tomorrow. Ooh, Cannot wait. Um, and I um, and in terms of new styles of goalkeepers, uh, just thinking then from this question, uh, I think one a model that uh, has sort of the opposite to lure, so you can like push models away, or an aura like foul odor, but instead of rough ground, it makes them so you can't go into that aura. So you have to like go around. Tell you what would be cool, away. like an aura that models can't draw a line of sight through, so they can't shoot because they can't see, they can't see the end the goal. point. Or they can see the goal, but it's harder to shoot, so yeah. you can chip them over. There are lots of potential, um, and I'm pretty sure the Steam Force guys. And, have got and what teams in the would benefit from a goalkeeper that haven't quickly? Um, Fish. And I know you play fish all out offensive goals, but if you give them something that stops the goals going the other way, um, I think they could all. We could we could put a goalkeeper in oh, yeah, every team. Yeah. Um, so that's good. Thank you for the good question, Alex Hall. So uh, and in names, um, <laughs> all out of ideas on team names for the show, but jumping on the future and demanding if Chris does not do match, if he does any match reports, they need to be called Match of the Hay. Genius. So yeah, there will be some you know match of the hay is coming. Maybe like the after act, like the after the game. I could do a summary. Match, yeah, match of the hay. Match of the hay. Yeah, done. Great. Done. I'll tell you another thing. I want to ask the, the subscribers as well. So we, we've been talking a lot about match reports. Yeah. Now it may be a pig for filming, but would you appreciate um, if you check out the um, three by three match report on the GBHL podcast Guild Ball TV that me and Jamie did in the early days? Um, very much with the basic stat line and the wound trackers down the sides for each pit. The other thing I'm thinking of adding to them is um, maybe after each turn, take each player individually and talk about their plans for the next turn and what went wrong in the previous turn. Do you think it would become too much to make the video? 
So basically, is that something you'd be interested in, or do you think it's a little bit unnecessary? Just sort of seeing every turn, each player individually pop on camera for 30 seconds and say, that's not what I wanted to happen. My plan for this turn is this, this, this. Yeah. yeah? So, so let so us know what yeah. you think. Do you want to just see a quick run through of a match, or do you want to see an in-depth talk to the so, players? Yeah, exactly. Thoughts and tell us what you think. So tell let us know. So cheers for the question, Alex, and he finishes with great guys, keep it. And then next up, we have the Matler. And his question says, what is the most difficult tactical decision you've had to make in a game of Guild Ball? Ooh, put you on the spot there. Good one. The most difficult. I sliding off camera, I think that's moved. Um, anyway. Um, er, well, early playing Guild Ball, it was always oh, what, we dis loads, what we discussed God. earlier, is yeah. getting your head round letting your opponent take a model out or score a goal oh. for a future benefit for your own purposes. Yeah. Um, so kind of goading your opponent into scoring to yeah. give them VP but then knowing that it will set you up to potentially win the game or go on and score. Can you think, Can of, you think one... of a specific? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Um, um, I played, it's not so much a difficult decision but it, it was a, oh, a good I've decision come back. I played Henry K, uh, another one of our local players, a uh, really good guy. Um, we had a point where if, if Mist, Mist took a parting blow from, I think, Siren. Is Siren attack five? No, attack three, I think. Two for the parting blow, five guys. So each, uh, Mist took a parting blow from Siren, and Mist had four health left, and I looked at it, and I was like, yep, you'll get it. And if Mist got out, she would have pretty much guaranteed me the game. All she had to do was get out, and I was like, he's got five dice, five fives can kill me. I was like, you're what are they trying to, and, and do you know what? I worked it out, and it's up near like a thousand to what noise. <laughs> it's hundreds to what or something stupid. And I was like, of course, I'll take the party blow. I'm back. Five fives. Miss went down, the game ended. Um, now, it's not necessarily the most difficult decision I've made, but that, that, that's actually a tough one to answer on the spot. Yeah, it is. I'll tell you what, um, uh, Matla, do us a favour, ask a question next week, and also put in this question again and we'll have a think about it won't we um, and we will come back with that my, my one That's just tough. off the top of my head was in a game against Jack Newton in the last tournament that he actually won uh, I can't remember the setup so I'll have a well think done, about what happened what happened but it was something to do with Gutter having to disengage to try and get a chain grab off um, and gambling whether I should hit his model first to get try and get a push or knockdown to then run away for free uh, or to try and take a parting blow with the hope that he wouldn't get enough to knock me down to give me an extra influence to in case I failed the chain grab and I gambled and went for the parting blow for an extra influence to do the chain grab and he managed to knock me down um, but it was like something stupid he had to hit with all dice to get it off and he did and knocked me down so yeah. so thanks for the question that's a tough one uh, we hope we've not completely fed that one off and then show name I think this is the last question for this week uh, yes. It yeah. is, yeah. So, this is the Vitruvian Goblin again, so it's Darren Hay of the Battle Hammer. Yeah. Sing the Battle Hammer song, go. What is it? The kick it in the gold thing, come on. I'm not seeing that. No? no. Yeah, true, they're the enemy to laugh at. Yeah, yeah, we can't, yeah, we can't do that. Psh, psh. It's like... Anyway, um, a pair of drunken... I think we were preferred to them as a pair of drunken... I think you did. I'm not sure I did. Hey, we're a team, although, 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 go. although I did it Dan again in the spread the guilt <laughs> bottle up thing. Anyway, a pair of, a pair of drunken lunatics. How very dare you be entirely accurate in your description, smiley face. Cracking show, by the way, really enjoyed it. Well, we're glad you enjoyed it, Darren. Um, please stay involved. Uh, my vote for this title is Momentous Tackle. That's popped up a few times. Yeah. Um, because the answer is... Why, thank you for, for noticing. noticing. <laughs> Giggle. Uh, have and we done number two? Spells, have we uh, definitely... Yes, we have. We've done that one. Yep, We've done that's that one. it. So... That's all that for, to, is uh, for today. All of the questions. Thank you for the suggestions. So before we move any further, let's talk about names for the show. Okay. On the ball. So, top three? On you. the ball. On the ball. Is at number one for me right now. Um, number two is uh, Under the Influence. Under the Influence and Momentous Tackle. No, I, I think they're the only two I'd be happy with. Under the honest. Influence. Under the Influence and On the Ball. On the Ball being... I'd be happy to say let's go with that. So are you going to be a dictator here, or are you going to no, be... No, I'm not. Are you going I'm to be not. democratic? If me and you are you going agree, to ask the public? Well, if me, it is a competition, so if me and you agree, that who, is the winner. Who suggested them? So... Because <laughs> this might... No, I don't want yeah. to know. I don't want to know. <laughs> no, I'll tell you. So, no, on no, the no, ball... No, 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 no. So, yeah, I, I agree. On the ball, I'm happy with. I think that's a great shout, and so I think that we're we should gonna, go with that. So, congratulations to Fat Pro Piranha. 
Fat Fat I think it's Jonathan Cullen. Yeah. Please let us know, buddy. And you have won yourself a metal tenderizer and a um, resin uh, alternative skull cracker. Exactly. And thank you so to well everyone who suggested a name. And the one that just missed out was GBHL James Clark, who is actually playing a game. 12 foot. <laughs> but thank you all for the suggestions. And going forward, this show will be called On the Ball. On the Ball with Chris and Jay. No, just on the ball. Uh, just on the ball. Uh, and what was the one we put in the locker room for later? Legendary Cause, play. Because that was um, oh, and another one. To be honest, I think we've been inspired we, by We have few. got a lot there of really good. good ones. So and Match of the Hay. Match of the Hay will be involved. Yeah. That will be involved. That's genius. You, you, so. you get the right to give yourself a high five. You too. get to be able to beat me 12 2 on Vassal. Oh, you've done that already. <laughs> Damn. Damn it. There you go. <laughs> but thank you all for getting involved, and thank you, Fat Piranha, for naming this show. So, again, without repeating myself, uh, we really appreciate you guys, you guys getting involved. We hope this format of show helps. And if you guys come across anyone who you think the show would help, new players or anyone who's got questions about the game, please send them this way, and all channel um, support really helps, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, and if people keep asking questions, one thing that I would suggest is try and be more specific. For example, if you want help with a certain uh, certain tactics or certain... Yeah. You'll tell if us you're who you're playing. Yeah. If you're us asking us how to beat the butchers, tell us what with, yeah. and we'll do our best. And we'll, we'll narrow it down a bit more. But thank you very much for listening. Yeah, so, as always, guys, please comment, like, share, and subscribe, and happy Gilball.